All right, so just a couple more examples. Um, here's one um, is uh, y dy dx equals x e to the negative y squared. And this one contains a, uh, a particular condition. This one could properly be called an initial condition because it's y of 0, but they could have given us y of 4 or something else. It doesn't have to be initial per se. So I like to call it a particular condition. That means we can get the particular solution. All right, so uh, we need to get the y's over here and the x's over here. So, you know, watch for things like e to the negative y squared, because I could just put that on the other side as e to the positive y squared, right? Just multiplying both sides by e to the y squared. I've still got a y here. I've got a dy dx. Oops, I wanted to put the dx on the other side. I guess that I'll do that in another step. Um, y, now I can't write. y e to the y squared dy equals x dx. I should have gone straight from there to there. It's fine. Okay. So, uh, now I need to integrate everything. So when I go to integrate this one, it's like, oh, this looks got an inside function. I'm going to have to do a u sub. So maybe let's look over here and just do the u sub. I have to do the integral of y e to the y squared. Integral of y e to the y squared. We'll just do that as some scratch work. Um, I can use u equals y squared. du equals 2y dy. Right, and then I have y dy here. So I can do 1 half. Uh, du equals y dy, and why not dy, I always say. Uh, so my y dy can be replaced with 1 half du, so I'll put the 1 half outside integral, and then I'm going to have e to the u du, and then that integral is going to give me e to the u plus c, don't lose the 1 half. <clears throat> and that e to the u is actually going to be e to the y squared plus c. So I mean, it's probably not too hard to figure out directly that the antiderivative of this is going to be 1 half e to the y squared all right, I'm not going to put the plus C. I'm integrating this as well. X squared over 2 plus C. All right, so there you go. That's that. Now, I, I can plug this in and solve for this um, C. But what I'd like to do first is multiply everything by 2. Um, e to the Y squared equals X squared. And now I'm going to have a different C here. So if I plug this in here, I'm going to solve for C. I would get a certain number um, that will be half as much as the number that I would get if I solve for the C here. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to get the same equation either way. All right, so um, this is our uh, general solution here. That's our general solution because it has the C in it. All right, now to do the particular solution, I use uh, my Y of zero equals negative two. So since Y of zero equals negative two, that means that um, E to the fourth power, right? So the Y is four, E to the fourth power, equals 0 squared plus c. I think I did this backwards when I did my, when I tried it. Remember, this is the x here, and this is the y. I reversed those. Anyway, so that tells us that c equals e to the fourth. And then, so my uh, complete solution, my particular solution, in fact, is e to the y squared equals x squared plus e to the fourth power. So if you want, as an exercise, you know, solve this for y by taking the ln of both sides and then the square root of both sides to get the y by itself. But that's not necessary. I'm going to accept it here. See, that's your particular solution. Sometimes, by the way, it's not possible to solve for y. The AP exam sometimes likes to solve for y. All right, that's an example. I'll do another example. It's our last example. Because it goes the same, right? So you got it, right? This is the deal. So we're going to have, uh, so let's see if we're going to sort of just be efficient about it. This is going to be 1 over y squared dy equals sine x dx. Antiderivative of 1 over y squared. Well, I might need to think about that a little bit. Um, that is the integral. I'm doing the integral of y to the negative 2 dy. So that's going to be negative y to the negative 1. Well, I mean, it's y to the negative 1 over negative 1, right? Plus c, so that's negative 1 over y plus c. So, I mean, some of you guys probably just know that right away. It is uh, negative 1 over y equals antiderivative of cosine. Don't forget, it's negative. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Put our plus c right there. Be nice to multiply everything by negative 1. So I have 1 over y equals um, cosine x plus c. These two c's are different. They are opposite to each other, but it doesn't matter. Um, if we solve for the c at different points, we would get different c's. But because then we would manipulate the equation after that, we would end up with the same equation. Um, I don't know, would it be worthwhile multiplying both sides by y? Not really. Yeah, but you could solve this. y equals 1 over cosine x plus c. Um, anyway, um, this is our general solution, but anytime we have a given point, we're going to get the particular solution as well. I mean, that should be in the, in the directions. It will say something like, you know, solve the initial condition problem. Um, 
doing? What am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm plugging in y of pi equals 2. This is my x, this is my y. So 1 over 2 equals cosine of pi plus c. I solve it for c. Uh, 1 half equals negative 1 plus c. c equals 1 and a half. I'll call it 1.5 if you want. Then plug back into my original equation. 1 over y equals cosine x plus 1 and a half. That is your particular solution. And that's how you do it. See, that's the whole deal. That was our whole deal today. All right, that's it. Here's what you got. I got a worksheet um, that is posted. It is called Differential Equations. Uh, I think there's only like eight problems on it or something. You do all of them. Okay, do all of it. I think it has um, that has graphs on it. Hello, Gertie. <laughs> yes, Gertie wants to do the problems. She's just step. She's just gonna step right on my computer and just press a bunch of buttons. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, differential equations. You got to do all the problems. Um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Uh, I think that uh, this has the second page of it has some graphs, and the graphs on the second page are cut off at the bottom. That's fine. You don't need to use the graphs. Okay. Do not need to use graphs. Need to use graphs. I'm laughing because Gertie's. Stepping on all the buttons of my calculator on my computer, causing havoc. She is wreaking havoc. Look at this cat wreaking havoc. You're a havoc wreaking feeling. All right. Enough of that.